Cherie, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Hey. I, mi I'm <laughs> huh? I missed you.
Today's show, you're listening to Instinct Radio. Hi, and welcome back to RCR Presents Real Discussions. I'm your host for today, Michelle Dosbert, and this is part two of my conversation with the lovely um, and talented Cherie Hicks. Cherie is dialing in from uh, Chicago. We're using wonderful technology called Skype, so we're here. Um, thank you for everybody that's been listening and sharing thus far. I feel the excitement bubbling. Thank you. So we're going to continue. Let me just do a, re a quick recap for those that are just joining us on part two. A lot of good information in the first um, uh, part of the conversation. Cherie was born in Memphis and then moved to Chicago, but has had a very colorful uh career as an artist, very young, um, as a matter of fact, in a girl group that consisted of five people, then it was down to three, and then she was um, in Chicago, then she had an opportunity to, to pursue some work and do some work in uh, California. Some things didn't work out the way they had hoped there, but then she had an opportunity to go in, with the girl group in New York, met some wonderful people there as well, and kind of opened her up to the house scene with um, various different pro producers like CNC Music Factory and those type of people um, during that era. And that didn't work out the way she had planned, but now <laughs> she's connected with her old friend, Sean Ali, Ali, who opened her up to what house music is all about. Um, Cherie's been doing house music for six years, but it seems like the music, how diverse, how well it is put together, seems like it's been longer than that. And so when we left for the break, we were right at that point where, Cherie, you recognize that there were different variations of house music. And now you're starting to, um, you're anxious, you're excited about it. And now you want to kind of get into it. Is, is that where we kind of left off? That's where we're at right now, right? Yeah. That's where we're at. That's yeah. where we're at. So now um, you're working with Sean, which was your childhood friend. Is he the first person that you produced some music with when you started yeah, doing house music? When it came to house music, yes. I mean, and he wasn't like a polished producer back then either. Okay. But I felt like he was somebody that I can trust and that I could build with because I knew what I would bring to the table as far as my writing and the vocals mm -hmm. and my knowledge of music overall while I was away and kind of taught it to him. And then, you know, he got with other people to really make his production solid. Okay. So we kind of like weathered the storm together mm -hmm. uh, when, when I first started doing house music because I knew him and I trusted him. Okay. So that, that's, that's, that's why we we'll always do music together. Okay. Now, how did that first track go for you? Did it did it chart well? Did it get a lot of play? She's laughing. She's laughing. <laughs> She's hitting her head. She's like, oh, my God. <laughs> it was growing pains. Growing pains, yeah. It was, it, was, it was okay, you know, but producers will tell you all the time, you know, and I, and I really appreciate them saying this, but they say Cherie can make any track sound good mm. so, like i would I, i'll work with people you know what i mean okay. or I'll, and they listen to me i said this in a, uh, a previous interview about a month back that the producers listen to me they take um my criticisms well because mm -hmm. i have an ear for music just like they have an ear for music okay so if if sean back then would you know have a horn sound or something that i didn't like i'd be like mm -mm, we need to get that out mm -hmm. with this type of sound in it okay until we got it together you know what i mean mm -hmm. so we get each other out okay okay yeah, well that's a good stuff, mm -mm. no the first i don't even talk about the first stuff why so not i, I don't know uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it, sheree it's here you know it happened but it's it's it's, it's it has a reason it's a purpose so it's going to help it's other people growing. right yeah yeah it's about growing it's yeah. about growing yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> so what made it so bad? Was it just that it just, it just didn't? Well, first of all, house music is totally different from R&B. Yes. So now, now it's like, it was like a balancing act. Okay. Me having things done a certain way in the R&B world and then trying to get used to the house music world. That was a struggle for mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to like challenge myself and condition myself to know it's two different ball games. Okay. And how to like capitalize off of doing house music. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, trying to bring the professionalism and the polishness from the R&B world over to what I was doing with the house music world. But this is totally different vibe. Mm-hmm. And why do you think it's um, it's so different? Is it just because of... You know, it's different because people love putting that underground word on house music, which I cannot stand. Okay. I don't like for it to be underground because the music is too good to be underground. Okay, Everybody now. hearing this music, this music should be heard every day. Mm. The issue is, and me and Mike City talk about this because we from the R&B world back in the 90s. What we realized was when the producers produce the songs, they're producing songs for DJs. Mm-hmm. There's no radio station that's going to play an eight to nine minute song on the radio. Right. So what artists and producers need to be smart about is, yeah, we're going to do the eight and nine minutes for the dance floors, but we have to do a four minute version, consolidate it, mm-hmm. so it can be heard on the radio. Mm-hmm. Radio edit. The radio edit, that's yeah. all it is. That's all it is. Once you do the radio edit, then, you know, maybe we can start trying to reach out to people to have some programming on mainstream radio for house music, even if it's for a couple hours a day. Mm-hmm. Like the house music world is just stuck into one thing, this whole underground thing. And like I said, that's the part I don't like about it. But that's why I started my own label so I could start doing things the way I wanted to do them. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about that label in just a second. Um, Cherie, you know, you said when you talked about radio edits, when I had Miranda Nicole as a guest, she said the same thing too that the radio edits are important, like that shorter, condensed, three-and-a-half-minute track that can be rotated and circulated in regular radio rotation because we don't get the exposure that it deserves. It is, it is underground. A lot, it's, a lot of people don't even know that it exists in their, in their own city um, because it's not being played in a commercial platform. But then you have some people, Cherie, that feel that once it does cross into that commercial market, it may lose its integrity. You know, the sound, the quality, the feel, the culture may shift if it gotten too commercialized. Do you feel that that could happen? I can understand that, but that's why we have so many different vibes and genres of it. Mm-hmm. You know, so it doesn't, it's not just one thing. Like even right now, there are producers who reach, I have a song right now in the top 100 on the house music chart, not soulful, okay. because you know I'm 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 a writer, so yeah. I, I don't put myself in a box. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, it's different vibes to it, and it's different ways to go about doing things. So if you are a deep house producer, you don't have to change the fact that you do deep house, or mm-hmm. just because you're a soulful house artist doesn't mean you have to change, or the integrity is going to be lost. Continue doing what you're doing, mm-hmm. you know. People, whoever like it, they're going to like it. They're going to like it. And typically what happens is, yeah, and you're right. You're absolutely right. Typically what happens is there's one version of a song, and it's really delicious. And then you have different producers that attack it and remix it different ways. And you get different right. flavors of yeah. that of that one track that you put out. And yeah. so then when you go as a consumer, I can go and pick I, there might which be five, feels- right, five or seven different options of right. that. And I can pick which one I like. And then as a DJ, I'm playing which one that's going to fit the crowd. And so right. there are, that's, again, that's another unique thing about house music, that you yeah. sing it the way you I feel it. That. Yeah. yeah. And then DJs that, are, that, are, that know what they're doing can cut that up, change it up, give it a different fi- a vibe and feel. And then you're charting, like you yeah. said, house, then you're on deep, then you're... Yeah. you're Every, then you're everywhere. Now, Cherie, talk to me about, let's let the people see your beautiful T-shirt. Let's see that T-shirt you're wearing. That's your brand today. Let's see the brand. Yes. That's the brand. Yes. What, that is Chic, chic Soul Music. Chic. Chic Soul Music. Yeah. Tell us about Chic Soul Music. Chic Soul Music is something that I started, and the whole idea behind it is, I'm, I'm, like my stuff is about being classy mm. and, you know, I have like a smooth kind of vibe to myself and the quality of the music is always going to be good because I invest in it to make sure I work with the right people. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, this is my brand uh, that I created, started my own label so that I could do things the way I wanted to do things. Okay. And, and once I figured that out and got a couple records under my belt, under my own label, then I could do it for other people. Okay. Okay. So right now you just have just a few um, tracks produced under your the CSM label? Oh, I have about maybe 10 releases now. Awesome. Yeah, about 10, yeah. Awesome. Working with different people? Different people. Um, well, let me just kind of tell you what got me noticed in the house music scene. Okay. It was because of Josh Milan. All right. And I'm bringing him up for two reasons. Is because when I did the song with him, uh, which was a Christmas record called Santa Baby, a mm. remake of Eartha Kid's Santa Baby. Nice. Okay, so when that came out, he did a, a Christmas album and gave it out to everybody. And I was so happy that he asked me to be a part of it because mm -hmm. I hearing about him. I was listening to Thinking About Your Body and telling Sean, that's who I want to work with. <laughs> <laughs> well, we knew it. He was reaching out saying, how can I do a record with Cherie Hicks? He asked Sean. So that's how that relationship started. Nice. So uh, another reason why I'm mentioning Josh is he's the reason that I started Chic Soul Music because he used to, we used to talk all the time when we were doing music together. Mm -hmm. Like the kind of artist that you are, the type of writing that you're doing, the way you present yourself. He was like, Sheree, you, you got the, you, you got the, you know, you can do this. You can mm -hmm. do your own thing. You don't mm -hmm. have to be at somebody else's beck and call asking them to put out your material because, you know, you, you got it together. Awesome. So that's, that's thought about it. I'm like, yeah, I can. Mm. So that's what I did. Awesome. So, so music started and how people started paying attention to me and what I was doing was because of Josh. Because of Josh. Well, shout out to Josh Milan. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome writer, producer, um, musician, and DJ. Just a good cat. Just a good, good man on the scene. Just doing it. Doing all kind of things. And so we always appreciate when he comes through to Atlanta because we have a good time with Josh and everything that he does. So I'm glad. So I guess he was kind of like a mentor to you yeah. in that regard. Kind of like got me over that hump. Mm -hmm. like noticing what I was doing and taking me seriously. I mean, because if he vouching for you, people going to listen. I know that's right. That's I know that's happened. right. I know. How it started, those type of people. Mm -hmm. that I saw. Awesome. Awesome stuff there, sir. So you've created the label in 2016 was it hard to birth the label because lately now it seems like people are able to and i'm using quotes double quotes have a record label is it no. easy to do that I, no it's not it takes money and um if you're trying to really legitimize it there's things you have to pay for you have to get clearance on the name you know what i mean it's, it's a it's a lot that goes into it mm -hmm. you have distribution uh so uh, what I did was I started building up my music through other people. Mm -hmm. So approach a dis distribution uh, uh, company. I said, I had this. I did that with this person. I did this with Terry Hunter. I did this with that person, you know. And they, they was like, okay, cool. Yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. You have to put the work in. It's not easy. People always say, I got a label. I got this, that, and the other. And no disrespect to anybody, but you have to put you gotta put the work in. You gotta build up the catalog of music. Work it up, yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta your pre your presentation has to be on point. So mm -hmm. I got the kind of, uh, got the website up, got where people could purchase the music on my own label as well as on Track Source because we all know that Track Source is the mecca for house music. Yeah. So yeah, just you gotta go about doing it the right way if you want people to really notice what you. Now that you are, you've got a foot and you've got an investment in house music now do you like do you like it just as much as you did as you were singing r&b sometimes mm -hmm. i see i see it we see you don't think we don't see your face we see the face why some why sometimes sheree be clear be transparent okay let me be transparent and and, and i am but I, I still have to think about what i say i understand I, take your time don't want to be offensive no it's just too segregated. Okay, okay. Bad part about the R&B world is all they cared about was how you look. You had to be a size two or mm. you had to be that person. Okay. But in the 
house music world, the downside of it is it's too it's segregated and too clicky. Mm. I really do not like that because I'm I'm not a click kind of person. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, that's that's what I struggle with with house music. And you know, I thought that that was just here in Atlanta. No. You know, I thought that we were just kind of because we talk like people talk about it. We talk about it off the mic or when the cameras are not on. We talk about it a little pockets of people and we say it just feels clickish it feels segregated and i thought it was just in atlanta so you saying you feel that i thought it was just in chicago Ooh, baby we got a problem <laughs> um and that's why it can't grow it can't really get to where it needs to be if we continue to operate in segregation and clicks could it be that the segregation is because there are different variations of house where people may feel Deep house is better than soulful or Afro or what? What do you think might be? Is that sometimes people don't want somebody else to do better than? Come them. on through now! Wow. I'm just gonna be honest. Wow. I, that, I mean, because we're dealing with first of all, the music industry is pretty much in shambles across the board. Mm. It's like totally different ball game. Mm -hmm. So when you have this much to go on right you're not trying to let anybody in this because you want this all for yourself I hear you. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so that's where it comes from people don't want somebody else to surpass them or do better than them mm. because it's hard out here baby. it is hard it is hard um you know parties um typically can range for free or five or ten dollars and you know yeah. when you go to an rb situation it's never that inexpensive right uh, it costs yeah. a little bit more um yeah. the artists are doing concerts or shows or at venues and having events and you pay twenty dollars and up just to really yeah. and so then for the house music side it's not as you know what i mean it's not as lucrative um, you know, when you have parties and that kind of thing. And we all have a great experience, but experiences are not paying DJs, it's not paying the yeah. vocalists, it's not paying artists, it's not playing, paying the venue that in which we're using that space. You know, so there is a cost. Um, yeah. and, and we don't, I don't know if we're all cognizant of that cost, but there is a cost there. And we can't continue to do it just for the love, right? Yeah. And, and we we love it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But we cannot continue to do it for the love, you know? Yeah, it's we, we, it's a business also. It is a business also. And I, and I know that there are, um, there are a lot of DJs and a lot of people here doing, and when I say here in general, like there's a lot of people that are DJing house music or just DJs in general. And you can hear people say, yo man, just give me that track. Give me that. And, and, and it costs. Like, that, that burns me <laughs> It burns me up when I hear a DJ tell somebody else, I'm going to, I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get a whole file of music together. Yeah. If you pay for it, let them purchase their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm saying this your boy, or or you know maybe sometimes, but just to offer my music away that I just put money into. Mm -hmm. Disrespectful. It is disrespectful. So Sherry, let me ask you, Sherry, let me ask you this. Um, we always want to present the challenges and the opportunities on this platform, but we also want to present solutions too. So yeah. how do you think, what do you think we could do um, to try to change the paradigm of this underground, using the word underground for one, trying to just raise the elevation and the vibration of house music? How, what do you think we could do about that? I mean, it's, it's so many things. Like sometimes I'll see people like sometimes artists or DJs pass out their music and they wrote on it with a magic marker. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just doesn't look professional. Sharpie. Mm -hmm. you know, it's Sharpie <laughs> and, you know, and, you know, people, if, if you, they ask you, some people don't, even, like when producers ask me to do a record with me, if they don't start talking the business immediately, we probably don't have another conversation. I heard that. I mean, it's one thing for me to build an alliance with somebody, and I have people that I have alliances with. Mm -hmm. because you know what we bring in, and you know we pulling it together. Right. But somebody that I don't even know, and you don't even mention anything about any business part of it, you don't get a response from me. I hear you. Okay. You know, so we have to treat it like it's a business. Of course, be competitive with pricing and stuff like that, because we do love this music. I know I do. Mm -hmm. Um, it, we just, we have to treat it like it's a business. Mm -hmm. We have to do that. Okay. Okay. And to try to find a way to make it more professional. Mm. 
you know, for people to take it serious. Yeah. Yeah. That, that I would agree. I think that, um, sometimes deals are made, um, verbally <laughs> and that's fine. And there's no follow up with, um, the contractual part of that. And, you know, again, it's, it's, it's going to take a, a few people to continue to raise the vibration, to treat it as a professional, um, entity that it deserves to be treated in because, if we treat it like you can do deals off of a napkin, that's where it's always going to be, right? Yeah. So, again, we want to try to um, continue. We want this, me, my goal is I want to be able to have this genre of music around long after I'm gone. I do have a concern because I feel that there isn't enough mentoring in it. Um, as we're getting older, because I'm 50, and I don't know how much long I'm going to do this, you know? Right. And and so, Sheree, I feel like there we need to start to embody younger people into this genre because it oh. is great music. Did I oh. hit a note? Did I say something? Let the choir say oh. amen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sheree, help me. What? What I say? What I say? <laughs> let me tell you something. I sound like um, five months ago. <laughs> but let me tell you something. OK, so. Remember I told you I started the label? Yes. Because I'm 45. Mm -hmm. And there's other things that I want to do outside of music. So I said, I try to incorporate people all the time in the uh, productions and the songs that I do. Mm -hmm. I hire vocalists. I mm -hmm. pay them for their services. Mm -hmm. I hire musicians. I pay them for their services. I hire producers. I pay them for their services. But what I do is, listen to the voices that I include in what I'm doing to be able to pass on this music to them. And it's usually somebody in their 20s. Okay, good. Why I, I just released a young man by the name of Jaleel Meadow. Mm -hmm. Jaleel was 25 years old. He didn't know anything about how to. Mm -hmm. But when he came into the studio session, because he was re referred to me by another vocalist, he said, what is this music? Mm-hmm. I, I, this is incredible. It sounds so good. Yeah. I said, what you call soulful house music. Mm. So I really like this vibe. And then a lot of the DJs that play my music, they say, you know, they have people that don't like house music that's their friend. Mm -hmm. they free, but I promise you, whenever I put one of your records on, because of your delivery, yeah, they buy into mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So my plan is to have people like the Jaleel Meadows, mm -hmm party for him so he can bring his 20 year old friends there you go there you go so that my 40 and 50 year old friends can kind of we can bridge that gap yeah. so that it can continue on mm -hmm. easily pick jaleel meadows because he has his own audience mm -hmm. with his house music mm -hmm. so you know he did really good in the charts and everything for his first time around i put him with some good producers Mark Francis, DJ Beloved, Sean Ali and Corey, Kyle Kim from Korea. So I'm trying to get his name out there on our side, but we have to embrace this. Yes, too. yes. We can't just stuck on, oh, it's old school house. This came from back in the day. No, no. no. It has to evolve. Tell him. It's going away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. And and um, my hat, I tip my hat to you, Cherie, because a lot of people, maybe people are doing it. I don't know. I know um, Kai say here in Atlanta, shout out to Kai. He does it and he does it publicly. So he has Stefan Ringer. He has Ash Lauren that are half his age, younger, hungry for music in general. And right. they're very good at what they do. They have good um, track selections and they and it and I go and I support them, especially Stefan, whenever I can. Um, get an opportunity. I love the way that he spins in his presentation. And they're hungry for it. There are some younger people out here, but we can't continue to be closed minded. Um, you, we can't. We have to share our dance floor space with them. We have to invite them in. We have to embrace them. Because, you know, house music is all about love. It's That's very it's rarely about. we go. I hear when I when I first started, but pretty soon after I started it, I wasn't feeling in love. Uh oh. So, uh oh. You know, they say that all the time. It's all about a feeling. It's all about the love and this, that, and the other. But it's not, it's not displayed all the time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to do better about it. I think that yeah. those that know better are going to do better about it. And that's why 
um, having you on this show as a as a great vehicle and a platform for you to kind of express and just share antidotes, right? Your your successes as well as some antidotes because we want to keep it going. We, we want to we want to keep too, it going. It's too beautiful not to keep it going. It's too beautiful not to keep going. Show the people your beautiful trademark on that arm. I saw it early on that arm. Show how dedicated you are to CSM. Look at that. Do you see that? I'm a writer. She's a writer. So this is like a calligraphy pen. Awesome. With the label name Chic Soul Music. You are dedicated. I have no RCR nowhere on my body. I need to I need to step my game up and put something on me that says real chicks right. I got to get it on there. I got to get some RC on my body to show how committed I am to my brand. It, it looks beautiful. I'm in it. Now. I'm in it so. You're in it. Whatever I can do to keep it moving, I'm down for that. I know that's right. I know that's right. I want to talk about the fact that I see you a lot um, nationally. Have you done some international travels as well? Because your repertoire is heavy. Are you going across the pond often? I have been across the pond, but not for house music. Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but but for house music, no, not yet. Okay. All right. Shouts out to Amsterdam. I got some people from Amsterdam listening. Come on, Diplo Global Diplomacy and everybody else. People in Toronto, we need to be getting this passport stamped up for Cherie Hicks because we had you here in Atlanta for Tambor 8, right? Eighth, an eighth year anniversary. And that show was dope. You gave a wonderful performance. Um, very professional. Even your sound check was tasty. I was like, yes, this is going to be good. And the crowd loved you. They embraced you. Um, you have such wonderful um, selection of songs to sing from. And, and oftentimes, Cherie, when you start singing the song, what happens? The crowd sings it for you. <laughs> Rest me that composure. Yeah, oh, we we love that composure. That's the one right there. Did you write that? Did you write that one? Yes, absolutely. Mm. Mm, yeah. mm, 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 mm. Who helped collaborate on that for you? Who was the producer for that one? On that one, actually, that was Chic Soul Music's first release. Awesome. That was my first ever release, and it was the best one. But yeah. that was DJ Pope. DJ Pope, awesome. So DJ Pope did the original. Mm -hmm. And then I had a, a mix by DJ Beloved. Mm -hmm. And I had a mix by Sean Ali. Mm -hmm. okay. And every mix killed Everybody, yeah. We love it. Yeah, when Louis Vega got wind of um, Keeping My Composure, the Pulp version, mm -hmm. he ran it in the ground. <laughs> it was really great. Yeah, that's a good person you want running your music. Exactly. So, yeah, he ran it in the ground. I was in a couple of his um, chat rooms before when he played it. Mm -hmm. and it just, it was, it was nuts. Have you done work with Vega, Louis Vega? Have you? I've not done work with Louis Vega. Not yet. Let's say yet, right? <laughs> yet, because it's yeah. coming, right? Not yet, but no, no, not yet. Okay. So you've done work with Josh Milan, right? Beloved yep. Pope. Who else? Mark Francis. Mark Francis. Zephyr Saint. No, not yet. Not yet? Okay. Not no. yet. Putting it out there. Not yet. So, uh, we, Williams, Scott mm -hmm. Diaz, the Funk Lovers, these are people from overseas. Okay. Uh, uh, Vinaigrette, uh, Chris Foreman from Steel Vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Uh, Cafe 432, which are awesome. Nice. Love. Nice. Yeah. Anybody's your favorite? I mean, not to not to make anybody feel bad. They're all good. No, I can't. You can't do that. Okay. All right. I thought I'd try, but you can't do that. Which one? Okay. How about this one? Which one um, was your most memorable production? Is it the Keeping My Composure one? Is that the most memorable one? Composure, of course, that's like a great song, but that's not my most memorable one. Okay. Mine, and it's probably because of the place that it came from. Mm. Actually, it actually was one of DJ Beloved's songs called um, Forever One. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's because of, I like the writing and the arrangement, mm. the arrangements mm -hmm. and everything out of it. But, I, I mean, I love all the producers that I work with. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. You got some more that you're going to work with soon, I'm sure. Um, you 
are very good with music. Are you a musician by any? By oh any? Wish. I don't you, have you don't have the patience. <laughs> my engineer is laughing. You don't. Have, <laughs> you don't have the patience. No. No. Don't have the patience. Okay. I'm a musician. So, what I feel like I'm good at is just something that comes natural to mm, me, and mm -hmm. I don't have to force it. Okay. Okay. So, I don't. I don't have the patience. I mean, I didn't try the whole, and they they get on me saying, Sheree, you can record your own stuff and just get Pro Tools. I, I don't have the patience. You said I don't have patience for that. You're going to work with some other people. Professionals do what they do, and then I'm going to do what I do. We're going to bring it all together. I know. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. Which artists, because um, you're, you're still a very good, talented artist, singer, writer. Now in 2017, who inspires you the most? Oh, I love Don Tolman. Really? We like oh, my gosh. She was just here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I mean, her writing is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like, like for real, for real. Yes. I rather write than sing. I say this to people all the time. They're like, "What?" I'm like, "Yes," because what you put out into the universe mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. I have daughters, so I'm really careful about how I write. Mm -hmm. And if I'm a little bit risque, it's like in and out, not all the time. That's right. not what I'm known for. Right. Like, whole experimental thing. Right. But I'm saying done because she is the total package for me. Mm -hmm. She's a great writer. I love her melodies. I love her harmonies. You know, her performances are just electrifying, and she had people shouting. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I really look up to her. Yeah, she's really good. I like a lot of her music. Yeah. Um, it just, the words are very powerful in what she's saying, and um, it, the music is always good. It's just awesome. So she's really good. Is there a possibility of you guys working together? We'll see. Mm -hmm. Put it out in the universe. That would be an honor. That would be an honor. That would be a good one. That would yeah. be a chart, a chart topper for sure. <laughs> I believe Absolutely, with, without any questions about it. Are there any uh, Are there any artists, Cherie, you would like to see work on the CSM label? I know you want to give it some time where you're cultivating, you have all this great music and you're building up that catalog as we speak now. But is there is there an artist or vocalist that you'd like to see on CSM? Um, I haven't really thought about it because, like you said, I'm taking my time with it. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people also that I've been the guinea pig for my own label just to make sure that I'm doing everything right mm -hmm. and you know, trying to perfect with everything. I do videos sometimes, so I'm not really sure who else I will want yet. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, take your time about that. Well, we're going to take a little break, and when we come back, we're going to close it out with part three with my conversation with Cherie Hicks. All right? We'll be back in a minute. The biggest station in the world playing all of today's hits. You're listening to Instinct Radio. Hi, Sheree. You gonna you can take five minutes this time. Okay. You, all right. See you in five. Okay. Cool. Thank you.